Always make sure you test out your setup before you leave. I got my battery, my radials, my antenna tripod, the antenna itself, coax, microphone, the radio. We're rocking the X6200 today. Look at that noise. I am leaving the RV park today. I'm going up to Scott's Bluff where that noise won't be there anymore. And then the new Gable roll-up radio antenna bag. So there is all of that stuff except for the coax packed into the roll-up radio go bag. And what I do with the coax is I just shove it right in here and then I roll it up. So all that stuff that you saw out there, the ground radials are in this bag. The Denco battery is here. The antenna tripod is here. The antenna itself is inside of its own little antenna hold up. The radio is inside of this pouch. The microphone is here and the microphone cable, the power cord and the broadcast interference filter is all in here. Just so you don't think I'm lying to you. And then there she is all rolled up. There is this handle here. Once you get it unrolled that you can hold it and everything hangs down from. There's a couple of grommets here to hang it from something if you wanted to. There's your regular carry handle for carrying it around. And then you even have a shoulder strap to go with it. So I think this is a pretty good setup for carrying an entire radio station with you. So this is kind of an interesting setup for me because I'll show you the terrain that we're working with. The antenna is right here and off in that direction is a bit of a knoll. If we turn 180 degrees off in this direction, there's all the cars and another little bit of a knoll that way. But if we turn in this direction, you can kind of see an opening or a pass and then down in the valley you can see, but you can see, I don't know, 10, 10 plus miles in that direction. And if we look over here, beyond the two trash cans, you can also see pretty far in that direction. So what I've done is I've taken my ground radials and I've pointed them towards the openings in the terrain to try and bend the signal, bend the bubble of RF a little bit in that direction. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be better than not having them that way. So instead of my normal situation where I put radials in four different directions, I have two radials going that way behind the camera and two radials going that way behind me. Do what you can. Today's antenna is the gable coil loaded vertical on the gable tripod. And I'm using the tripod because I don't think they'd be too happy if I put stakes in the ground at this park. It's also super easy to pack this thing up in a backpack and go. I love these little one wrap Velcro ties here because they secure your cable when it's all done. But when you open it up, they don't disappear on you and you don't have to go hunting for them and you don't forget them up on the summit or on the trail or in the park. External power with the Denco battery gets me eight watts of transmit power on the X6200. I can see the screen pretty good here in daylight, but the camera likes to focus on the reflection. You can see it a little bit better when I give it some, some shade, I guess. Where's the sun? There we go. Sun's behind the camera. And all that noise I showed you back at camp is now gone. This is why we POTA. Let's see if we can do some hunting here. Nice strong signal. All right, I'm glad. So I am in Scott's Bluff, Nebraska, Fort Collins, Colorado is not that far away. I might be up high enough that if he's got a beam on a tower, he's pointed straight at me. I can't hear the other side of the contact. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. This is November 3, X-ray Hotel. I'm calling 
Kilo Mike 9 Golf. Kilo 5, Charlie Alpha. Kilo 5, Charlie Alpha. A whole bunch of ants around here I had to move. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. The Oscar Zulu Station, please. Nope. Kilo Mike 9 Golf, park to park. Dakota, Dakota, your November 3rd X-ray hotel. Kilo Mike 9 Golf, park to park. Yeah, he can't hear me. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. Kilo Charlie 2, Echo Bravo Alpha, 59 US 8669, USL. Muck Wanego, Wisconsin. Kilo Mike 9 Golf, park to park. Whiskey 7, Delta Bravo Papa, 59 US. November 3 X ray Hotel, this is Kilo Mike 9 Golf. Can you hear me? I hope you can't hear me on this frequency either. Kilo Mike 9 Golf, park to park. Park to park, stand by. Whiskey 1, India Papa, 58 US 86. Well, he heard me that time. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. I can kind of hear you down in there. Try it again, please. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. QSL? I got nothing. Sorry, right. maybe we'll wait a little bit. Try it again. All right. And I miss on that one. We find a clear frequency. Start calling. It's the beauty of QRP. If I ask if the frequency is in use, nobody can hear me anyway. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. Is the frequency in use? Is the frequency in use? Kilo Mike 9 Golf. I ain't hearing nobody, call me back. I don't know if y'all can see all those ants on camera, but man, they are just everywhere. Probably not the good kind of ants either. Well, we had to cut that one short. There is a problem with this radio that made it impossible to make contacts. And I figured out what it was while I was up on the mountaintop. I'm not getting any power out. And it's not because it's QRP, it's because there is something going on. Let me show you what's going on. So right here on the radio, we have our signal strength meter. I'm on a dummy load, so I don't have a whole lot of signal coming in. And we have our power meter, which is the lower half of the scale. So when you're not transmitting, you see signal reception. And when you are transmitting, you see power. And then over here we have SWR. I'm going into a dummy load here, so it doesn't matter that we're on the FT8 frequency, and that's also why you're not seeing any signals on the waterfall. So if we look at that power meter on the radio, I'm going to do the, the old man trick, and I'm going to do audio, audio. So my SWR is really high, my tuner's not on, and I'm into a dummy load. So with these radios, the first thing customer support's going to tell you to do is a firmware update followed by a factory reset. So I'm going to get that done real quick. I don't have high hopes for it though. But you always got to do it because it checks the box and moves you down the chain. I have a whole video on doing the firmware update on this radio. So we'll just do this real quick here. First, I want to go into system, and this is 103, September 24th, 2024, and I'm going to put 106 on it. So power off, power on. It says update finished, so I'm going to pop out the SD card while it powers itself off. We've got our shore power plugged in. We're booting back up again. System. Firmware upgrade. Upgrade. Every time I go to hit the quit button, it makes clicking noises. It has internally rebooted itself. I can hear it. Let's see what system info says. 106, 106, January 11th, 2025, and January 14th, 2025. So we're in good nick there. I'm going to go ahead and reboot this thing anyway, just to be safe. All right, we are on USB. We have the original Zygu mic plugged in. I'm gonna turn off the ATU. ATU is now off. Audio, audio, yeah. Not, not going anywhere. Okay, so firmware upgrade, both parts. Factory reset, I forgot the factory reset. Let's do that. Factory reset, yes. Yes again, it's rebooting, but you can still hear the all right, let's try it again. Audio, audio. You can see it peak up there. We're, at, we're set at five watts. Let's turn that up to eight watts. 
audio, audio, interesting, audio, audio. We're getting full marks on there, audio. Let's take a look at the SWR meter on the radio, audio, ooh, full marks. One of the best tools you can have when it comes to troubleshooting is another radio. So this is my 6100, and you guys know I have done a lot of stuff with this radio. So I'm plugging in the same coax, the same power cord, the same microphone, the same everything. So let's get her fired up. Audio. Okay. We're not seeing fluctuating SWR. Audio. Interesting. Audio. So my SWR is still not great. Whenever there is microphone pressure, the SWR moves, but I am getting that eight watts out. So now what could it be? Some of you eagle-eyed people might have noticed that the ATU is still on. So check this out. Audio. Audio. We've got full marks on the power band and we have clean SWR. Audio. Okay, so I don't think it was the tuner. I think the tuner just had a leftover bad match. Let's rerun the tuner. Found it. Perfect. Audio. Yep, full marks, no bad SWR. So I have one last test to do, and that is to replicate the setup that I had on the mountaintop outdoors and give her another shot. I am not going to be foiled again. I've got the X6200 here, I've got the X6100 here, and we are going to go back to Scott's Bluff. If one radio go box isn't enough, why not two in the third box? One of the cool things that I didn't get a chance to show you about this bag is that all of these pouches here are all removable. So you can totally mix and match this thing up any way you want for whatever radio you want. Do you think it was a little ambitious to include an entire radio transmitter station in here? Or should I try and get more stuff in this bag? Well, before I got a chance to get on the air, I had a nice gentleman stop by and say hi. So hello if you're watching this video a couple of days from the time that we filmed. It was good to meet you. I set the radio up. I made a contact. It was a summit to summit with two operators. So I am halfway to my soda goal up here. And that was one QSO, two operators. Perfect. Let's see what else we can get. It means the radio fixes fixed things. Oh, there's a park to park. I don't know which side of this contact I'm getting though. Copy, copy, it's uh, Kilo Mike 9 Golf is my call sign. My park number here is US 4319 QSL. 4319er, 4319er QSL. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. I gave you your park. I meant to give you my park. Mine is US0962. US0962. Call sign is Kilo Mike 9 Golf. QSL? US0962. 0962. Okay, I think I got all three of them. Awesome. This radio works now. This is beautiful. I'm going to turn the camera off because it's hot up here, and then I'll show you the logs when we're all done. So remember how I said always test out your setup before you leave? Definitely go a little bit farther than I did. Normally, I don't have a problem with these things, but I have not used this radio in voice mode in almost, well, 
well, geez, almost a year at this point because I've been playing with too many other radios. There's too much fun stuff to play with in this hobby. And I remember the last time when I was with Shane in Wisconsin, I was having trouble getting the park on the air, but I made it happen even at the two watts that I was putting out. And then he got on with his QRO station, his, his big boy 100 watts, and blew me out of the water and got the park activated real quick that we were sitting at. I didn't really think anything of it. I just thought it was a difference between two watts and 100 watts. Well, eight watts and 100 watts is what I thought I was doing. Put it in the back of my head and moved on with my life. And then we get to Scott's Bluff. So what you guys saw was the second and the third time that I went up there. The first time I went up with my two meter handy talkie to do a summits on the air activation because Scott's Bluff is PH005 in the W0N region. It's Panhandle of Nebraska, etc. It's also Scott's Bluff National Monument, and it's also the Oregon Trail and like two or three other trails. And it's a huge area, but I made sure I got up to the top of the mountain and I did the activation from within the activation zone. And as you saw, I wasn't near my vehicles, either one of the two that I brought with me. And we got it done for both POTA and for SOTA. Four contacts are needed for SOTA, 10 contacts are needed for POTA. And the first time I did it on two meters, I only got two contacts. Log all of your contacts and upload them, whether you activate the park or not, because it gives credit to the hunters who are also trying to get the parks and the summits in their logs. I like the fact that that gable bag rolls up the way it does. It makes a lot of sense to roll up the way it does. I really love the X6100 go bag that you saw, the little black bag that I put in the yellow case on the back of the motorcycle. I love that thing because it holds 100% of my 6100 kit, except for my antenna and my radials. But the idea of having a, a bag for all things radio that goes inside of a bag for all things today, all things excursion, all things expedition, whatever it is. And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to name Ford products here, but that's that makes sense to me. I will leave links for all the stuff in the description down below. The solution to the 6200 was kind of a comedy of errors, if you will. It was firmware upgrade, which needed to be done anyway. It was factory reset and then turn the tuner off and that finally got it done. And I was just messing with the tuner, trying to see what the tuner thought because I was seeing high SWR and I wanted to see if the tuner saw it too. And you know, just play with stuff, why not? Pretty sure it was something in the factory reset that did it. And this is not the first time I've done it. And it's not a Zygu limited problem. When I got my ICOM IC7300 brand new, that radio would not transmit at all until I did a factory reset. So out of box experience, still bad even with ICOM. Either way, it was fun riding up the road in the big truck. I was actually kind of worried that the truck wouldn't fit through the tunnels properly, but it did just fine. And then riding the bike up was awesome. I love how the gimbal on this camera works as you're going through the corners. You can see the bike turning, but the horizon stays steady. That was pretty cool. And it's a day in the park. I mean, we, we did some hiking. We enjoyed some lunch, saw the museum, listened to the interpreter for a while. I did get to see a bighorn sheep up on the mountaintop. It was far enough away that I could see it with the binoculars, but the camera, I was at like 30x zoom and couldn't see it. I did get some other good pictures out there. And if you guys are interested in any of these pictures, I'm gonna start putting these up on my store at temporarilyoffline.com for sale. And I'll find a way to ship you guys some nice canvas prints. I just did a canvas print of a abandoned service station in Tucumcari, New Mexico, and got it done on canvas, and it looks fantastic. Something new, another, another thing to add to my Parks on the Air excursions is a little bit of photography too, amateur photography to go with amateur radio, why not? If you like all kinds of stuff like this, be sure you're subscribed to the channel because I do all kinds of stuff like this odd, I know. Right down below the video is a subscribe button. Subscribing is free. I'd appreciate it if you click it. I am on a mission to get 100,000 subscribers this year and you can help. After you click that, there is a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.